I'm going to talk tonight about a new radiocarbon age determination from a Tennessee cave that provides the oldest absolute date for prehistoric cave use so far obtained in eastern North America. Sometime around 6,500 years ago, prehistoric Native Americans explored this cave and carried out a, comp a complex set of probably sacred activities. The cave, which we call 49th Unnamed Cave, is located in northern Tennessee. It's been long known as an archaeological site for more than 60 years, in fact. Amateur excavations were carried out there in the 1950s, but since then the cave has stood open and unprotected. It is uh, on private land. Looting for artifacts has been very extensive over time. The digging you see here is all looting, um, especially for the last two or three years, and unauthorized excavations in several areas within the cave has destroyed what was certainly a very rich and important archaeological deposit. The first recorded excavations in 49th Unnamed Cave were carried out in the early 1950s, 1956 specifically, by an amateur archaeologist named Ted Hay. Hay uncovered a dozen human burials inside the cave, including six children, three infants and a fetus, and five adults. Two men and two women could be identified among these um, buried individuals. Artifacts were also found in the cave, and they give some idea of its chronology. There was no pottery found at all, which means for us that the cave was used sometime after 4,000 years ago, um, was not used uh, after 4,000 years ago. Spear points, which you see here, dated from between 6,000 to maybe 9,000 years ago, um, were found in the cave. But based solely on Hay's early and imprecise investigations, we can't say much more about the activities in this cave. But in 2007, during an inventory of prehistoric skeletons in Iowa, an isolated human cranium was found that was labeled as B7 from 49th Unnamed Cave in Tennessee. We have no clue how this got to um, Iowa, but after consulting with the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, we reinterred the cranium back into the cave. During that 2007 visit, we explored the cave's deeper passages. We saw river, carbonized river cane torch fragments scattered throughout the interior of the cave. Um, these were deposited as prehistoric explorers stoked their torches on the walls to keep them burning. We also saw evidence for other prehistoric activities, including fine-grained clay deposits lining the cave walls that had been removed and fingerprints had been left in the walls as the, cave had been, or the clay had been dug down. In some places, pointed wooden, wooden digging stick marks had been employed, uh, digging sticks had been employed to remove the clay, leaving behind telltale puncture marks that we've seen in a number of Tennessee caves. Maybe most interestingly, deep inside the cave, we discovered several petroglyphs engraved into the bare limestone walls some distance from the cave opening. These petroglyphs are faint and weathered, but they comprise a series of line segments, some cross-hatching, as you can see here, some seeming to radiate around a central horizontal axis. And at the lower left of this petroglyph site, and here's a close-up of it, is a figure that has more coherence to it, perhaps a long oval outline oriented vertically with short horizontal line segments connecting the lateral elements of the outline like a ladder. Early in 2014, we returned to 49th Unnamed Cave because of new reports of looting inside the cave. The Nature Conservancy, who monitors this cave for cave biota that live in it, had, had noticed um, really over a very short period of time that the entire inside of the cave had been turned over. Several of the areas had seen really heavy attack by people wielding picks and shovels. At this point, based on our visit, we advised that the cave entrance be gated to inhibit further looting, damage to the important archaeological and the natural resources that resided within the cave. Those include several rare and endangered, uh, endangered troglodon animal species, like the snail that you see here. The Nature Conservancy, um, being the great organization that they are, designed and paid for a strong but bat-friendly gate. It was built under the direction of conservationist Christian Bobo, one of the finest welders that uh, I've ever seen. Uh, and that gate is now in, in place in several of the entrances to the cave to protect both the archaeology and the rare animal species that live inside. During that most recent visit, we also collected a large fragment of burned river cane for radiocarbon dating by accelerator mass spectrometer. The results of the, that date, while somewhat surprising, are not out of line with the archaeological material I've showed you um, that was found earlier in 49th Unnamed Cave. 
So this side slow slide shows the age determination and the calibration curve used to pinpoint its absolute or calendar age range. The measured age was 5,660 years, plus or minus 30 years before the present. And when that's calibrated to actual calendar years, a date is obtained that centers on 6,441 years ago. This table compares all known radiocarbon age determinations older than 4,000 years ago from caves in the eastern woodlands. The 49th unnamed cave date at the top at nearly 6,500 years ago is the oldest absolute age known from an eastern cave, older by nearly 800 years for any prehistoric dark zone cave activity east of the Mississippi River. The six oldest age determinations all come from four sites in northern Tennessee. Uh, that's the Tennessee-Kentucky border that crosses the middle of this slide. Um, cave use first shifts northward, first appears in that region. It then shifts northward into Kentucky and southern Indiana around 5,000 years ago. And after 4,000 years ago, there's general prehistoric cave use throughout the eastern woodlands. We think that this tracks the origin and spread of an ancient religious tradition. The looting of 49th unnamed, pay, unnamed cave is especially egregious for living Native American peoples. They cannot help feel but that once again the graves of their ancestors were desecrated out of meanness and respect, lack of respect. Think of that young woman who was buried in 49th Unnamed Cave 6,000 years ago, was unceremoniously removed and shipped to Iowa, and was brought back to her race, re, resting place only to have her peace disturbed a second time. Her story alone should encourage us all to honor and respect the, and protect the very ancient prehistoric resources in the deep caves of Tennessee. Thank you all very much.